So wasn't really planning on doing a lesson on this song, it's just kind of happened. And the reason is very often in the mornings these days I'll be listening to music with my daughter and we'll listen to various classic albums. So a lot of Beatles and Bowie and Miles Davis. And last week the album we were listening to was Rubber Soul, which I think is one of my favourite Beatles records. And just felt the urge to learn how to play this song. I've not done that properly before. So that's what I'm going to be talking about today. Let me play through a bit of the song, then I'll get to the teaching stuff. <laughs> So there we go, I've really enjoyed learning to play this song and we've got those great and groovy verse and chorus riffs which are quite easy to play. Then we've got some amazing lead guitar work from Paul McCartney. Now McCartney obviously best known as a bass player and I'd say he's probably my number one favourite bass player but also he's right up there amongst my favourite guitar players. I think he's got a really unique style and he's quite undervalued in that respect I think. When many people listen to the Beatles stuff, they're going to assume that all of the lead guitar is played by George Harrison, when that's not actually the case, and there's an awful lot of great McCartney guitar work right across the Beatles catalogue. I can't really think of anybody else who sounds quite like him. He plays with a lot of fire and passion. He's got a really unusual sense of phrasing and timing. He likes to use these big interval skips, which give his sound a kind of angular quality, which I really like. Anyway, let me move to a close-up, and I can discuss all of this in some detail. We are in the key of D major and let's start with this intro guitar lick and I think this is one of the great rhythmic conundrums in all of pop music. It's one of those classic instances of where's the beat, where's the one, the band seems to come in in a weird place and I think it's right up there with similar songs like Led Zeppelin's Rock and Roll or Jimi Hendrix all along the Watchtower. So I'm going to discuss that in just a moment but first of all let's just get the actual notes under our fingers. So the lick is this. <laughs> So it's all played in the fifth position and it's a D blues lick really. You could see this as a mixture of the D major and D minor pentatonic scales I think. We're going to start with this A note at the seventh fret on the D string and then we've got on the G string we've got five and then we've got a quick slide from eight to seven. And then we've got the fifth fret again and then we're coming back to this A. So then we're bending this F note at the sixth fret on the B string. And it's just a bluesy bend, so we're just pushing that slightly sharp. And then we've got some double stops. So it's the fifth and seventh frets on the B and G strings. Coming back to that A note and then more double stops. So let's talk about the rhythm then and I confess that I've been hearing the rhythm to this wrong for years like I think many people and the reason for that I think is that you assume that the first note you hear is happening on beat one so you're counting the riff like this two three four so the problem with counting the riff in this way is that the band then seems to come in in a really odd place you've got the drum fill then the main riff obviously has to start on the one but to count that out you need to have some kind of odd bar in there and I've in fact got some official Beatles sheet music and this is generally a pretty good book and a pretty accurate book I think but 
they've written out the intro to this song you can see it comes in on beat one there's a bar of four four but then you need to have this weird bar of nine eight to make the main riff come in on the one and that makes no sense at all i don't think paul mccartney would have thrown in a pointless bar of nine eight i don't know whether he wanted to wrong foot the listener or to trip them up or something so what's going on here then? It's a little bit of a puzzle this I think, but it all becomes clear once you realise that the riff doesn't actually start on beat one, it starts on the and of four. And as soon as you start feeling the riff in this way then it just fits into two regular bars of four four. The band kicks in in the obvious place and everything feels much more natural. Uh, the problem is if you've been used to hearing it the other way it takes a little bit of a re-education of your brain and of your ears to feel it in the new way but if I just try and play the riff with this count then it would sound like this we've got one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three four so that's how it should be with the correct count and written out this is what it looks like we're coming in with a pickup note on the end of four then we've got a two bar intro lick and then the band kicks in on the one of the third bar so let's talk about the verse then and this is played by Harrison and McCartney is doubling Harrison on the bass so you've got guitar and bass playing exactly the same thing which gives that powerful unison kind of effect and I read that this was Harrison's contribution to the song. I think he'd been listening to a lot of soul and R&B music and this part was directly inspired by Otis Redding's Respect and if you listen to that track you can hear exactly where he's taken it from. So what we've got happening here, we've got a single note line which is outlining the basic chords of the tune. So the verse of the tune is essentially one bar of D to one bar of G but rather than strum big chords like that we've got both Harrison and McCartney playing this single note riff and the notes they're playing are reflecting the basic harmony and we're essentially just playing the chord tones from the D and the G chord so we're going to start here this is a, a D note this is the root note of the D chord fifth fret on the A string and then we're sliding from the 7th fret to the ninth fret and that's the 2nd to the 3rd of the D chord and then we're catching this note here which is an A and that's the 5th of the D chord and then we're just coming back down again so it's root, 2nd sliding to the 3rd, 5th and the 3rd sliding back to the 2nd and the root again so that's outlining the D chord then we're just doing exactly the same thing but over a G chord so we're starting on the root note of the G chord and we've the notes are playing the same function here it's root second to third fifth and then back again the finger shape and, and pattern is exactly the same as for the D chord And the rhythm is something like this. We've got two, three, four. And in fact, if you listen to the recording closely, you can hear some slight variations in the rhythm between the first verse, the second verse, and the, the third verse. Sometimes it sounds a little bit more like this. So feel free to play around and experiment with the rhythm. A little bit so that's the start of the verse we've got D to G I think we do that three times then just before we go into the chorus the harmony changes to A and the guitar is just playing a single root note of the A chord here and then we have this just a little lick leading into the chorus and again this is outlining the sound of the A chord we've got we've got the root note and then the second to the third slide, the fifth, and then this time we've got the sixth. So this is nine to seven on the A string, and then ninth fret on the low E string. So it's six, five, third in terms of the function of those notes. So. Um, so 
So let me just play an entire verse for you slowly. We've got two, three, four. <laughs> So for the chorus we're moving to B minor which is the relative minor key to D major and the chords are essentially B minor going to G. It's really nice moving to the B minor there. I think it's a slightly unexpected chord change but once again the guitar is really simple. It's just playing the root notes of these chords. So we've just got a B going to a G. got a little passing A note in there as well, just an open A string. You could play all of this on the low E string if you wanted to. But it seems to flow slightly better if you play it in the open position and it sounds to me on the recording like I can hear an open string in there. So this is where I'm choosing to play it. So we're just going to repeat this. three times and then we've got this riff played all on the low E string it's nice and simple it's just E F sharp G E A G F sharp E and then at the end of the chorus we've got more of these single note riffs just like we had in the verse so it's Outlining the chords D, G, and A. So we're starting on the root note of the D, and then we're going. So he's outlining the G chord, we're sliding up to the seventh fret, and then the D note here, coming back down to G. Harmony is moving to A and we're playing this. So it's exactly the same idea. We've got the root up to the third, fifth, and then back down again. Let's discuss the guitar solo then and it's a great guitar solo and it's a great example of some of those elements of the McCartney style that I was talking about earlier so it's got really interesting rhythmic things going on it's got some of those big interval skips that I discussed and it's all played in the fifth position it's based on the D minor pentatonic or D blues scale and it's really based off of one lick which is just repeated with some variations and then it winds up with a slide part played on the high E string so Let's take a look at the basic lick, which sounds like this. So we're straight away kicking off with something interesting rhythmically. We've got a very quick triplet played on this A note at the 7th fret on the D string. Then we're over onto the G string, it's C to D. And then we've got this first of these big interval skips. So we're playing C to D. And then we're over onto the high E string and we're bending at the 8th fret. And to make that skip possible you're going to have to play the C and the D I think with the 1st and 2nd fingers and that leaves your 3rd finger free to skip over and bend up the C. And then straight away we're skipping back to the D note. Then we're onto the B string and we're going between G and F and you can just hear a slight 
a slight pre-bend on that G so you're pushing up that string then picking it and releasing the bend so you've got G F G G G F G and you can hear that McCartney is just tweaking some of these notes slightly sharp so Almost all of these notes have got a little bit of a bend or a bit of vibrato or something going on. So that's our opening lick which is then repeated just with some slight variations so that the second phrase goes like this. So that the main difference here I think is that instead of going just G to F we've got we're resolving lower onto the D so and then the third lick is more or less the same I mean if you listen really closely there are some little nuances and details that are slightly different but essentially it's the same lick played again resolving to the lower note to the D So that's the first part of the solo. Then we're ending the solo with this slide lick. So I'm going to grab my slide here. And um, personally, I find it quite awkward to play the actual solo and have the slide on my finger at the same time. It seems to kind of restrict, restrict my fingers a little bit. So I do find that quite, quite tricky to do. I wonder whether McCartney played the whole solo with a slide or whether that last lick was actually a punch in on the tape and he did that uh, separately. So the slide bit goes like this, it's all played on the high E string and we're moving from the 5th fret, 8th fret, 10, 13, 8, 10. And of course you don't need to use a slide for that if you're not comfortable using a slide or you find it easier not to then you can of course just fret these notes and slide between them the normal way. Um, it kind of gets more or less the same effect. Let me finish by putting together all of that for you. We've got one, two, three, four. So let's talk gear and I'm going to take you through the equipment I'm using today to get my sounds. And incidentally, if you're interested in Beatles equipment, then this is the book to get. It's Beatles Gear by uh, Andy Babiuk. That's uh, Adrian's book club recommendation of the week for you. And it's a really lovely book. It's got loads of pictures to drool over of all of the Beatles equipment right across their, their career. And uh, I'm assuming that McCartney on this one was playing his uh, Epiphone Casino's beautiful guitar here. Um, Harrison, I'm not sure what he was using. Maybe he was using uh, using a Strat. It was around about this era, I think, that uh, both Lennon and Harrison got their hands on these lovely sonic blue Stratocasters. But uh, I'm not absolutely sure about that. And likewise with amps, I'm guessing AC30s, but they they used a range of different amps in the studio. So unfortunately I don't have an Epiphone Casino so I'm just trying to reproduce the tones as best I can with the gear that I've got. So the guitar I've gone for today is my Vox Virage which uh, is the closest thing I've got to a semi-acoustic guitar. It's not quite a true semi-acoustic but it has got this kind of F hole and it's got these tone chambers in its body so it's got a little bit of that semi-acoustic resonance going on. I think it works quite well for this tune. My amplifier today is my Vox AC30 and unusually I've decided to go into the brilliant channel of that amp. The, if you know AC30s they've got three sets of inputs. You've got normal, you've got brilliant and then you've got vibrato. 99% of the time I'm going into the normal input of that amp. But for Beatles stuff there's something about the brilliant channel which has got this nice 
sheen and chime to it. It's sometimes a bit too harsh for kind of everyday usage, but for this song it really seemed to work and it's got that nice kind of gritty sparkle. And the tone you hear on the record is quite lightly distorted and it's probably just an AC30 cranked up quite high, but I'm not really able to do that in here with neighbours and everything. So I've actually used an overdrive pedal to get a bit of grit and that is my J Rocket Designs Archer. Well that's all for this video. Should you be interested I've written out the entire song in music and tab. You can find that up on my Patreon page. Thanks very much for watching. I shall see you next time. Bye.